Hyundai has come a long way, not only here in South Africa, but in fact internationally. From very humble beginnings as a brand using borrowed technology and boasting some pretty odd styling, it is now a force to be reckoned with. And it seems like every successive generation is better than the previous one. The brand new Hyundai i30 is a good case in point. Offered in three models with a choice of two engines and two gearboxes, the i30 looks more sculpted than its rounded, blobby predecessor. It's a hatchback that turns heads, and it needs to, because it faces some tough big-name competition. The Volkswagen Golf is a C-segment benchmark, while the Ford Focus also sets high standards, and let's not forget underrated stars like the Opel Astra and the Peugeot 308. In this group, the i30's European styling stands it in good stead. The hatchback was penned in Germany and its confidently executed shape exudes a strong identity. Honda makes a lot of its so-called fluidic design language and certainly its latest generation cars all have that sculpted, fluid and sometimes slightly contrived look that sets them apart from other models. The i30 expresses that styling approach with aplomb and confidence. The front end features an aggressively tapered approach with clear lensed slanted headlights, a profiled bonnet and a slim upper grille. The result is streamlined and distinctive. The profile is dominated by the accentuated roundings of the wheel arches and scalloped flanks that suggest a certain athletic intent. The top model gets 17-inch wheels. The rear's most obvious feature is the concave surface of the tailgate, which tips a stylistic hat to BMW's 1 Series. By comparison, the integrated bumper is bold and almost bulbous, while also concealing the exhaust tailpipe. The distinctive theme is continued inside the cabin. The importance of car interiors is often underestimated, but really it is a key element because it forms the interface between the car and the driver. Regardless of the spec, regardless of the technical capabilities, regardless of the exterior design, it's the tactile feel of the car that matters most. And in this instance, the i30 scores high marks. Indeed, the cabin delivers an upmarket message. The driver gets a multifunction steering wheel framing twin analog dials in chrome trimmed housings. The center stack is detailed in aluminum look trim and provides a home to the audio and climate control systems, while soft touch plastics on the dashboard add tactile appeal. The leather front seats are comfortable enough and fully adjustable, ensuring an ergonomically sound driving position. Equipment levels are comprehensive and include niceties such as Bluetooth telephony and audio, as well as USB and analog audio connections. Six airbags, all disc ABS brakes and stability control look after safety. The rear accommodation is adequate, as is the luggage compartment. As usual, the rear seat back is split and can be folded forward to boost cargo capacity. A full-sized spare wheel is provided. The new i30 comes with the choice of two four-cylinder engines, a 1600 unit and this one, a 1.8-litre 16-valve mated to a six-speed manual gearbox. Maximum power is 110 kilowatt, maximum torque 178 newton meters. But if you want an automatic, you'll have to opt for the 1600 because this one comes with that manual gearbox only. The all-aluminium engine is a brand new in-house design featuring constantly variable valve timing and variable induction. But while the output figures appear generous, the i30's real-world dynamics are not nearly as sprightly as its power-to-weight ratio of 91 kilowatt per tonne suggests. Although the i30 is responsive and brisk on the move, it's no rocket ship and the performance figures certainly confirm this. 0 to 100 time, 9.7 seconds, top speed 190 kilometers an hour. And interestingly, that's 5 kilometers an hour slower than the smaller engine 1600cc version. The real culprit here is the gearbox, which is equipped with ratios that appear too tall, especially as far as the top two gears are concerned. Sixth is an overdrive gear and is good for straight and level cruising only. To overtake, you'll need to gear down once and probably twice, and tackling uphills will be a fourth gear endeavor too. Pitch the i30 into a set of twisties and it's the steering that you notice first and for all the wrong reasons. It really is too light and too over assisted which means there's very little feedback. The car feels a little bit twitchy but then once you get used to that you'll find that the car does feel quite planted when you start pushing it and there's a lot of traction and a lot of composure too. Hyundai has equipped the i30 with adjustable steering assistance allowing the driver to choose between comfort, normal and sport modes. It's an attempt to add some substance and feedback to the anodyne steering wheel, but even the sport setting offers too little feedback, while the comfort mode is good for old ladies in parking lots only. 
The chassis is clearly capable enough and there's always the combination of the stability control and speed scrubbing understeer to rescue those who push into corners too hard. The i30 is a convincing contender in a segment dominated by the Volkswagen Golf and the Toyota Aorus, as well as smaller volume players like the Renault Megane and the Opel Astra. The i30 offers strong value for money linked to high spec levels and refined dynamics and as such we should see many of these cars on our roads. A lively engine at the core of the i30 flagship linked to a six-speed manual gearbox suggests strong performance and good fuel consumption. It's an attractively sculpted hatch that's also equipped to the hilt, but the engine's peaky nature and too tall gearing blunt performance and the steering remains anodyne.